chapter 2, verse number 7. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Everybody say amen. amen. Thank God for the reading of his word. I'm beginning a new series on this month uh, that is simply entitled God Made. God Made. Um, let's get this out earlier. I believe in God, maker of heaven and earth. I, I just like to get that out there. I just like to put that on the platform so everybody can know. I believe in God, uh, maker of heaven and earth. I have not been swayed by any premise, any discovery, nor any theory. I believe in the inerrancy and the infallibility of the book that we call the Bible. Therefore, I believe that there is a God who created what we see and who we are. We are God made. I just wanted to make that clear just so that you can understand that. I, I choose to view man in, in the light of divine revelation. That God divinely reveals to us how man was created. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then when we get to verse number, number 26 and 27, God gets the idea that he is going to create man. So he says, let us make man in our image. I choose to believe that. Whether not you believe that or not, I can't. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm not here to debate with you. But again, I just believe in the inerrancy of the Bible that what God says is true. And therefore, I believe that. So in studying my Bible, I'm, I'm amazed at the many passages in the Bible that tell us that we are made this or that we are made that by God. Uh, uh, in, in society where people are so adamant uh, about the fact that they are self-made, you know, I'm a self-made man, I'm a self-made woman, I'm a self-made millionaire, I'm a self-made this, I thought it to be imperative to reveal to the body of Christ all the things that God has made us, okay? Because this is what I realize about me, I'm a God-made man. Everything that I am, I have been made that by God. And all of you need to understand well, you, you know, that you are a God-made man or you are a God-made woman because everything that you are, you, you have it because God gave it to you. I, I, I don't have a witness right there, but I'm going to keep moving on. So simply put, we're going to see in this series that we are God-made. We're going to see it. I'm going to show it to you. Uh, uh, in the sense of creation, but not just in the sense of creation. Also, we are made by God in our everyday existence. In our everyday existence, we are made by God. So yes, God has made us to be, but also God has made us to be something. Uh, he, he just not just made us a being, but he's made us to be something, or he is making us something. He is making us something. You, you have probably said this yourself through a situation, a trial, or circumstance. You have said this, God is making me. Any, any of you ever said that before? God is making me. Well, we're going to talk about it. We're going to discover some of the things that God is making us because God is making us something. He's developing some things in our lives, and when God is through making us what he wants to make us, it's going to be greater than what we are right now. God is making us, so we're going to discover that. But, but before we discover all those things that God has, has made us, we have to digest the doctrine that God made us and created us. Okay, we can't be afraid of that. We can't be afraid to talk about that God has made us and he has created us. So, so we read the scripture again uh, that says, then, then God said, let us make a man or human beings in our image to be like us. God says, I want to make man so that they can be like us. And then in verse 27, it says, so he created them, male and female. He created male and female, man and woman, to be like him. That's why we were created. So man has a place in the universe that is extremely high. He has a place in the universe that is extremely high. Nothing else is said in the scriptures to be created in God's image. There is nothing else that has been created in the image of God but man and woman. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah, I'm going to teach a little bit today. I'm ju just going to talk a little bit something. The fact that man is created in the image of God means that his basic function is to reflect God. Okay, the fact that we've been created in the image of God means that our basic function is to reflect God. Man is God's is, is God's reflection on the earth. 
Uh huh. He is the the creative the creative repetition of who God is. That's who we are. We are the repetition on earth of who God is because we have been created in the image of God. Are y'all listening to me? Um, even as a father or a mother may be imaged in a son or a daughter, so is God imaged in man. In other words, you know, he, he, this, this is what I'm saying. You look like your daddy. Or you look like your mama, or you know, one or the other. You look like your daddy, or you look like your mama, or or you act like them, or there's something about you. You walk like them, you you talk like them, uh, or whatever. I, I, I recently, not recently, but a while back, uh, I was, I overheard a conversation uh, uh, about me, and and it was my, my 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 late uncle John. He was talking about some things, and and I'm not, I haven't been around my daddy uh, probably uh, since I was two years old. But um, but I heard my uncle say of me. He says uh, when I hear him talk he sounds you sound like your father and I'm like how can I sound like my father I don't know how he sound but because I'm imaged after him that has been placed on the inside of me and so in the same sense because we are imaged after God we have God on the inside of us uh, wait a minute let's look at an example of this go to, go to the fifth chapter of Genesis that's come on let, let's I, I got somewhere to go here uh, let, let's let's go to Genesis chapter 5 um, Genesis chapter 5, verses 1, 2, and 3. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, 2, and 3. Okay, let's, let's just look at this, just, just to show you the premise here of what I'm talking about. Um, number, verse number 1, Genesis 5, verse number 1, and that New Living Translation, we're staying there. Um, go ahead and read that. This thing. is the written account of uh -huh. the descendants of Adam. This is the descendants of Adam, uh-huh. When God created human beings, uh -huh. he made them to be like himself. When God created human beings, he made them to be like himself. Read. He created them male and female, uh -huh. and he blessed them uh -huh. and called them human. Okay, read. When Adam was 130 years old, That's pretty old. he became the father of a son who was just he like became, him. He became, listen to this, a father of a son who was just like him. Uh -huh. In his very image. In his very image. Wow. Read. read. He named his son Seth. Okay, so man accordingly, man accordingly is to God as Seth is to Adam. Okay, just like just like Seth is to Adam, made look like Adam, made in the likeness in the image of Adam, so is man unto God because we have been made in the image and the likeness of God. Man is a reflection again of, of God on the earth. We are the mirror of God. Now, uh, 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 of course, now we we understand that the original image was marred by sin. Okay, we, we, the original image of God, the reflection of God, was marred by sin. When Adam and Eve fell from perfection, a part of God's reflection was damaged. So, so when we are born in the world, we come into the world with, with some sin in our lives, and therefore people can't see God in us. But once we become born again, once we become born again, then that image of God should be seen in us. We ought to be reflecting who God is on the earth. Why? Because we are born again. Did y'all hear that? Okay, so let, let's look at the scripture. Okay, I got a lot of Bible, a lot of Bible. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4. This is where Paul is talking about being born again, about being saved, about what we need to do. Okay, all right. And so in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, it tells us what we need to do, okay? It tells us what we need to do because we fell from that place where we ref reflected the image of God. And so the only way to get it back is we got to be born again, okay? So Ephesians 4 and 24, New Living Translation, read it for me, please. On your new nature. Put on your new nature. Created to be like God. Created to be like God. Truly righteous. Truly righteous. And holy. And holy. Put on, because you are born again, you have to, let, now I need you to understand what he says here. He says you got to put this on because this is a decision that you make. You make a decision to be holy. You make a decision to, be, to live in the righteousness that he has already a, a given unto you. He says if you put on the new nature which is created to be like God. See, when you put this on, then you become like God. You live like God. You think like God. You act like God. You speak like God. Why? Because you put on a new nature. I, I, am, not, I am not living according to my old nature that acted like my other father. The devil, okay? I, I actually, what happens to us when we become born again, we are taken out from that house and we're placed into a new house. And so the devil no longer becomes our father. Therefore, we no longer act like the devil. 
when we are born again, now we begin to act like God. Okay, all right. Um, the, the same verse, the, the same verse there that I just now read, Ephesians four twenty four, um, out of the New American Standard Bible, um, kind of really breaks it out. It says uh, that's the NASB. If you go trying to look it up on your on your thing, Majig, it says, and, and it says, and put on the new self. Put on the new self, which is in here. It is right here, which is in the likeness of God which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. So we have to understand that this new man that God supplies to us is like the Adam was when he had relationship with God before he fell. He says, I'm going to give you that man, and that man has been created in righteousness. And so, therefore, we get back to that place where we become the full reflection of God because we put on that new man. Please understand something that you need to put on the new man. Because if you don't put on the new man, you will always op operate in the old way. And if you're going to operate in the old way, then you're not going to be a good reflection of God. And the problem is, is that, is that when you hear the world say that they come to the church and can't find God is because we have not, as members of the body of Christ, put on the new man. Because the new man will always reflect God. He will always reflect God. And so, therefore, we must put on this new man. I don't want you to see Ernest. I don't want you to see me. I don't want you to see who I am. I need to put on this new man, and as long as I got on this new man, you're going to see God. Okay, y'all got me? Okay, so 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 let, let's move on a little bit here. Let's move on a little bit here. I got to do some other stuff. Okay, so 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 it, this this new man again is created, all right, in the likeness of God, and we put him on in order to restore the fellowship, the place, the, the glory, if you will, that man is supposed to have with God. So so now he says again that I'm gonna create the, create this man and I'm gonna create him after my own image. So 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 what is it that God has created in us that is his image. Well, God has created the soul of man, the soul of man in his image. Not, not the physical body. No, 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 not the physical body. When he, when he talks about the physical body, he's not talking about that. That, that physical body is, he, 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 no, that, 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 that thing is decayable, is all that kind of stuff. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the soul of man which has been created in the image of God. Now, um, according to the Bible, mankind is distinct from the rest of creation. Like I said, we are distinct even from animals. We are, we, we are distinct from the animals. Uh, uh, praise Jesus. In that, again, we have the image of God. He didn't say that animals had the image of God. He didn't say that donkeys had the image of God. We are distinct from animals because we have the image of God. Are y'all listening to me at all? Now, as God is tripartite, which means that he is three parts. He is He is. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so is man three parts. We are body, soul, and spirit, okay? Uh, now, now, well, Paul begins to explain this. He, he shows us an explicit example of this in Scripture. Uh, look at this. Let's go here. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Y'all stick with me here. I know I'm giving a little bit too much theology for you at 8 o'clock in the morning, but come on, stick with me. For, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Let's look at it. Uh, New Living Translation again, uh, because we are three parts, just like God is three parts, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We are body, soul, and spirit. Um, First Thessalonians 5.23. Uh, come on, Annette, get there. Read that for me. Um, now may the God of peace. Now may the God of peace. Make you holy in every make way. Make you holy in every way. Uh -huh. And may your whole spirit. The whole spirit. And soul. And soul. And body. And body. Be kept blameless. Be kept blameless. Until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Huh? Paul wanted everything about you to be holy. Isn't that interesting? I mean, check, check that out. Paul wants everything to be holy. He wants, he wants your spirit to be holy. He wants your soul to be holy. And he wants your body to be holy. Okay, by the way, this is a well-balanced Christian right here. A well-balanced Christian is a Christian who has every aspect of this as being righteous and holy. You know, and a lot of times in our churches, we have people that are unbalanced Christians, okay? They have certain aspects of themselves that are holy, but that body... Praise the Lord. Let me keep moving on. 
Okay, we, we, but Paul praying that that mount that the God of peace may keep you holy in every way. So I want my spirit to be holy, and we're gonna talk about these things a little bit later on here. I want my spirit to be holy, I want my soul to be holy, I want my body to be holy. I want what's on the inside of me, my the spirit of who I am, I want that to be holy. The soul, the emotions, my thinking, I want that to be holy, and then I want my body to be holy. I don't want to be connecting my body to anything that is unholy. I want that to be holy. Holy. That's man reflecting the image of God. You do not reflect the image of God. By the way, can I just keep cheating just for a moment? You do not reflect the image of God just by walking around with, you know, an a, a elder's collar on. Praise the Lord. You, you reflect the image of God by how you live, by what you think, by what you do, and what you put in yourself. Because that affects your spirit, your soul, and your body. Okay. All right. All right. So let's 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 let's, let's get this. Let's let's get this. So 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 we are we are three part people with soul, with with spirit, and with body. Now now, did, did I hope that you understand that there are certain characteristics that are found in the spirit of God, which are also found in the spirit of man. There there are certain characteristics that are found in the spirit of God that are found in the spirit of man. We we're gonna consider three of those characteristics. I can I can't give you everything, but we're gonna consider three of those characteristics or, or attributes that are found. In God, which are also found in man. And this has to do with us being created in the likeness and the image of God. Are y'all still with me? Okay. Okay. And, and, and so, and, and so uh, let, let's just talk about number one. Number one. Number one. This this the same thing that's in God that is in man. Number one, God gave uh, a man a mind. God gave man a mind so that he could know God. Okay. God gave man a mind so that he could know God. Now, understand this. If you properly look through scripture and and, 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 and study out scripture, the mind of the man is really the spirit of the man. The mind of the man is really the spirit of the man. When the scripture talks about the mind, it's really talking about the spirit of who you are. Okay, so God gives man a mind, a spirit, Spirit, so that we could know God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know what? You know what? I I, I was telling my my, uh, my one of my Bible college classes. I was telling them that uh, one of the things that we ought to rejoice about is that we have the mind to know God. Because and understand this, you've got to read your Bible. I don't know if you read your Bible, but can I suggest to you that you read your Bible? Okay, your Bible tells you some things about yourself that if you really read it, there would be no way that you would be able to come to church and talk about you don't have anything to praise God for because you don't know the position that you are in as a believer this is what the scripture says the scripture says that the God of this world little g God little g God of this world which means the devil has blinded the minds of people so that they would not believe the gospel so that they would not be able to receive the word of God but look at you look at you look at you sitting up in here look at you sitting up in here with a mind to know God it is one of the greatest things that you could ever praise God for is that God allow your mind to get to the place where you could understand that you needed a savior and that you serve him today. I thank God that I'm in my right mind. Yeah, I'm in my right mind. And, and, and you need to understand that. That's one of the things that we should always rejoice about is that we are in our right mind. I'm tearing up something here. I'm tearing up, I'm tearing up stuff. Lord, have mercy. I'm in my right mind. God gives us that mind. God gave me a mind to understand that I needed to know God. And I'm praying for those people that are out there that, that, that the devil has blinded their minds. But I'm also rejoicing that the devil ain't blinding my mind. That my mind is free to know God. And that's one, of those, that's one of those things that God has placed within us. God has given us a mind so that we can know him. There's a scripture, and boy, I wish I had time to tell you about some of the stuff that I, that I got. But there's a scripture that tells us in the New Testament that we have the mind of Christ. What a revelation that is, that we have the mind of Christ, which means this, that we have the same mind that Adam had before he fell. We have that mind that God places within us so that, listen to this, so that, I need you to hear this, so that we can think the way God thinks and know what God knows. You know what the Bible says? And you've got to understand why the Bible says this. I know we quote this, but I don't think we understand why it's there. The Bible says that my ways are not your ways, neither my thoughts, your thoughts, right? And we quote that, and we quote that, and we quote that, but we don't understand that we don't need to quote that anymore. 
you're quoting a Old Testament scripture before the coming of Christ. You're quoting something because man was in a fallen condition. And man in a fallen condition cannot know the ways of God or have the thoughts of God. But when a man becomes born again, the Bible says that he has the mind of Christ. And therefore, my thoughts are just like his thoughts, and my ways are just like his ways. Now, see, y'all don't even want to talk to me. You know why? Because you want to live in the Old Testament, and you don't want to live in the New Testament. You don't want to live in the fact that we have been recreated in the image of God. And so, therefore, you walk around, you, you walk around not knowing, and I'm going to show you some of these scriptures later on. You walk around not knowing. Matter of fact, I read this, I read this, I read this, I read this, and you're not going to like this, but I read this. I read this. It was a quote by C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis says that a born-again believer cannot make a decision that's a mistake. Yeah. He says a born-again believer cannot make a decision that's a mistake. You know why he says that? He says that because we have the mind of God. We have the mind of Christ. And as long as we are fully committed to the Holy Spirit's operation in our lives, we think like God thinks about things. Now, all that other stuff, you allow your flesh to rise up and suppress the Godness that's on the inside of you. But as long as you are led, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And sons think Think like their daddies. Y'all don't, y'all y'all cannot receive the gospel here this morning. Sons think like their daddies. And because I have the ability to think like God, I make decisions like God. Wow, I don't know if I like this. That's because you don't, you, you don't want to be what God made you. You want to be all that stuff that preachers have, have kept you bound in. When you can't do this and you can't do this and you, you, you're, you're no good and all this other kind of stuff. No, I'm trying to preach some deliverance in your life to let you know you've been made by God. And since you are born again, born again, you have the mind of Christ. You can receive the things of God. You can walk in the things of God because of what God has placed on the inside of you. Okay, y'all are making me go to another scripture that I'm not even planning on going to just by the way that y'all are looking at me. I'm just, y'all y'all are forcing my hand here. You, you're forcing me to play some cards that I wasn't going to play. I was trying to hold my cards, trying to hold my cards, but I might well knock you out now. I might well, you know, I might well play the ace now. I might well, might well play it now. I was trying to hold it to the end. All right, but I need to collect some books now. I need, uh, uh, <laughs> uh-huh, all right. So, 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 so yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about now. Okay, all right, come on. Let's, let's go to the book of first Corinthians come on go to the book of first Corinthians go there go there thank you Jesus go, go there go there uh, I'm getting off of some stuff but I want you to see some stuff okay good you you don't understand how God made that you are okay all right all right Let, let's go to I'll read all it's so much to read and then I'm gonna read this so I can kind of rush through it um first Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 10 okay hold on hold on now verse number 9 verse number 9 because I'm going to show you something that we quote, uh, but we don't quote enough of it, okay? This is what the scriptures, this is, this is what the scriptures mean. This is what the scriptures mean. Y'all with me? Verse 9, this is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Now, that, we quote that real good. I haven't seen, ear haven't heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for them that love them. We quote that as if we don't know what God wants to get ready to do. That's not true. Because this is what it says next. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. So I am not living in I haven't seen, ear haven't heard. I'm living in, but the Spirit has revealed it to me because I got the mind of God. Y'all ain't ready to do it. For his Spirit, for his Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. See, y'all don't read your Bible. See, y'all looking at me right now like, oh. yeah, God shows us his deep secrets. What are his deep secrets? His thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Now they are. Because God shows me his deep secrets. Is this too much for y'all? Oh, y'all don't want to hear this? Y'all, okay. So, so he shows up. Hey, I'm going to show you my secret. Now, check this out. Check this out. Verse 11. No one can know a person's thoughts 
accept that person's own spirit. In other words, I don't know your thoughts because I'm not your spirit. Your spirit know what you're thinking right now. You go, you sitting up here looking at me shaking your head, but you might be thinking, I wish he would sit down. Okay? I don't know that, but your spirit knows that. Okay? And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. Now, here's the question. Do you have the spirit? If you got the spirit, then you can know his thoughts. That's okay. Y'all don't read your Bible. Verse number 12. And we have received. <laughs> Glory. We have received God's spirit, not the world, so that we can know. So that we can know the wonderful things God has freely given unto us. We already have the spirit so that we can know what God is thinking. We've been recreated to know this stuff, y'all. Y'all about to make me read some more stuff. But verse 13, when we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak word given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truth. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It sound, it's, and this way I'm sounding some of y'all right now. It sounds foolish to them. You know why? Because you're not in the spirit. You don't think that you can have this. And so you're going this down. I can't know what God is thinking. I can't understand what God's thoughts. I can't understand his ways. That's because you in the, you're not in the spirit. When you're in the spirit, you can think like God. You can act like God. You can speak like God. You overcome stuff like God. Why? Because you're in the spirit of God. God made you like that. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay, it, it sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those, listen to this, for only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. Those who are spiritual, spirit, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Please listen to this. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things. Remember I said, you can make a decision, and the decision can't be wrong. Why? Because you're spiritual. Those that are in the spirit can evaluate all things. You can, you can look at something and tell whether or not you need to do something. Y'all can't receive a word. You can look at stuff because you're in the spirit and you can evaluate. Do you need to deal with this? Do you need to be there? Do I need to, do I need to get involved in this? Do I need to invest in this? Do I need to be a part of this? Why? Because I'm in the spirit and I operate in the spirit and I got a new mind and I think like God thinks. And because I think like God thinks, I'm able to evaluate stuff. I'm able to look at things and go, wait a minute now. I don't need to be dealing with that. I need to go over here and deal with this. Can y'all hear anything I'm saying? Can y'all hear me? Okay, you can evaluate all things. It's right there in the Bible, but it says this of them. But they themselves cannot be evaluated by the others. Well, huh? Because I'm so spiritual, you can't figure out what I'm doing because I'm walking in the spirit. And what this means is that carnal people will look at you and say, you are making a wrong decision about that, but because you are spiritual, you can't, what they're saying will not be the evaluation that God has for you. So some of y'all trying to figure out, well, what is he doing buying them buildings and stuff like that? You trying to figure out, you're too carnal to understand this. I'm operating by the spirit. Can't make a bad decision. Because I'm operating by the Spirit. I wake up in the morning because I've been made by God, and I can't make a bad decision. Don't y'all read your Bible? Let me get your Old Testament, because since you love it so much. Whatsoever you do shall prosper. So whatever I do prospers. Why? Because I'm a tree planted by the river of water. I'm getting the knowledge that God has. The same stuff he knows, I know. The same way he sees it, I see it. The same way he evaluates it, I evaluate it. Why? Because I'm getting the stuff running up in me that comes from him. Just somebody tell him, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. You got to hear this. So let me finish verse 16. Let me finish verse 16. Let me finish it. Okay. Four, listen to this. Here's the question. Who can know the thoughts of God? Who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But here it is. But we understand these things. For we have the mind of Christ. So who can know the thoughts? We can because we understand these things. We have the mind of Christ. Boy, I'm so glad to be God made. Man, I got the mind of Christ on the inside of me. Every decision I make is right. 
Y'all didn't like that? You look like you didn't like that. Based upon some of the decisions that you made out of your flesh. You made that decision out of your flesh. If you would have allowed the Spirit of God to, to control your mind and you made the decision out of your mind, then you wouldn't have had that. You wouldn't have messed up what you messed up. Why are you looking at me like that? It wasn't me that made your decision. You should have been led by the Spirit of God. Every decision I make is a success because I have the mind of Christ. So let's start living like that. So from this day forward, come on, say, from this day forward, every decision I make will be a successful decision. Got the mind of Christ. Some of you that are single are not going to choose the wrong person. Hallelujah. Every decision you make is going to be the right decision because you can evaluate all things. Now, you got to hear me. I don't know where I'm at in this message or how much time I got, but you got to hear me. When you evaluate it in the spirit, don't start operating in the flesh. One of the worst thing I hear, one of the worst things I hear people say is that, man, I knew something was wrong when I first started that thing. I knew there was something about it when I first started, but I went ahead with it anyway, and I did this, I married them, I got involved in this. Well, if you knew in the first place that there was something wrong with it, then you shouldn't have got involved in it. Because then God was giving you the ability to think like he was going to think, but then you rushed through it and begin to operate in your own flesh. I'm preaching better than the amens I'm getting. That wasn't in my notes, so let me go back to my notes. <laughs> so number one, the only thing I got to so far, God gave man a mind so that we can know God. Number two, number two, number two, this is the part of the image of God that's in us. God gave man a heart, a heart, so that he could love God. God gave man a heart so that he could love God. This heart you can put in the areas of, of the soul or the emotions. God gave us that soul, the emotions, so that we could love God. We have a heart so that we can love God. I preached that just out of the last series. So I don't have to preach it again, do I? You know, where it says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Come on, with all thy heart and the mind, okay? And I, and I, said, th I said this. I said that the reason that we can love God is because God placed the love within us. Okay, God gave us the heart to love God. A part of the born again experience, again, listen to this. Old Testament says this, okay? The Old Testament talks about that I have to give you a heart of flesh because you can have a stony heart. Come on, y'all know that. And, and we talk about that, and we talk about how people have a stony heart, a stony hard heart. That's, that's another term, a hard heart. Well, when you become born again, you no longer have a hard heart. God recreates. He makes a new heart within you. And then with that new heart, you are able to love God. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you something right now. I need you to understand this because some of you are going, well, I got some issues with my heart. Let me tell you, if you are born again, God has already recreated your heart. He's already created within you a new heart. You don't have to go back to the Old Testament and always pray, Lord, create in me a new heart. God is already, y'all only want to amen nothing I got to say this morning. God is already, you stop, stay out of the Old Testament, come to the New Testament, and understand that God has already created within you a new heart. The question is whether or not you're going to allow the emotions, the, 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 the will of your new heart to cause you to do what you're supposed to be doing. That's all you got to do. You don't have to get up here on my altar every Sunday. God created me a new heart. Oh, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Oh, God. You ain't got to pray that. That's Old Testament. That's David. That's before us. We've been born again by the power of Jesus Christ. Don't y'all know that? God, what's wrong with us? We're so pitiful. We don't know this stuff. We're born again by, his, by the blood of Jesus Christ, and therefore we have a new heart, and this new heart says, I can love God. This new heart says, I can love God. And because I can love God, whatever else emotions that's supposed to come from my heart are able to come from my heart because they are inbred within me because I am born again. We've got a new heart. Then the third thing, let me hurry up. Third thing, God gave man a will, a will, a freedom of choice, so that they, so that he could obey God, so that he could obey God. God gave man a will, freedom of choice, so that he could obey God. 
one of the most interesting things that I study in, in one of my studies of, of, of church history, one of the things that we look at, we also look at theology. And one of the most amazing things that we, that we talk about is Adam. And one of the questions is, how could Adam have sinned? How could he have sinned? Because God had placed everything within Adam that he needed to be able to live for him. And the question is really an unanswerable question. We can come up with our own opinions and our own thoughts about it, but Adam had no right to sin because God had placed no desire in him to sin. One of the things that we can discern from the story is that that devil is a tricky dude. He, I mean, if he could cause Adam to sin, don't think that he can't cause you to sin because Adam was not born with a sinful nature. He was born in perfection and holiness and righteousness. Adam had no sinful nature. And if the devil was able to convince a man that had no sinful nature to go against the will of God, please don't be fooled into thinking that you who were born with a sinful nature cannot be fooled into doing what the devil would want you to do. But I am so glad that God has placed a will in me, a freedom of choice, so that, listen to this, so that I can obey God. Hold up, hold up, because a lot of times, oh God, I got to do communion. A lot of times, a lot of times, when we talk about the will that is in us, we say that the will is in us so we can do what we want to do. Okay? The will is not in you so you can do what you want to do. The will that God places in a believer is the will to obey him. Okay, y'all missed that, so I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. A lot of times we say that the will that God gives to us as a believer is a will to do what we want to do. But the will that God places within us is a will to obey God. There is a will that God has placed in me that causes me to always want to obey God. I have that will with on the inside of me. And you as a believer, you have that will too. You have a will to want to obey God. I want to please God in everything I do. I want to live for God like I'm supposed to live. I want to live holy. I want to live righteous. I want to do everything that God would have me to do. Why y'all not talking to me? Okay, let's talk about Paul. Paul says in Romans chapter 7, Paul says that I got a will in me to do good. And when I would do good, I also have a will in me that doesn't want to do good. That comes from my old man, and I understand that comes from my old man. But then when it gets to Romans chapter 8, he says, he talks about the fact that we have been delivered from that old will so that we do not have to do what the old will wanted us to do, but now we have a will to obey God. For the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the spirit of sin and death. I have a new will. Come on, say, I have a new will. I have a new will. I wake up in the morning. I got a new will. My will is to obey God. I want to do what God. There's something. On. Have you ever? Have you ever? I got clothes. Have you ever in your mind thought about doing some sin? But in your spirit... There was something in you that kept telling you it's not for you to do. You don't want to do that. You know why? Because there's a will in you to obey God. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says this, that we don't know how to pray as we should, but we have the Holy Ghost on the inside of us making intercession for us. You got to get this part, according to the will of God. Most of us, when we think about that, we think that the Holy Spirit is praying for us so we can get houses and we can get cars and we can get new clothes. No, the Holy Spirit is praying for you to obey the will of God. God. It's going to be true when they tell me, you tore it up this morning. I sure did. I'm just turned up. The Holy Spirit gives you the will to obey God. A part of me being the man that I am. You have to forgive me. Paul says this. We don't have anything to boast about. I don't have nothing to boast about. I'm a God-made man. 
What's on the inside of me is all of God, okay? God gave me the mind that I have. He gave me the heart that I have, and he gave me the will that I have. I'm God made. That's just, all, that's just what it is. I'm sorry. And those of you that are walking around here because you are, you, are, you are perfect Sally or perfect John or whatever you think that you are, you know, stop all that mess because you don't have nothing to be talking about. God made us this. The reason why we walk in what we walk in and live like we live is because God made us this way. I can't wait till I get to that scripture that says that God has made us the righteousness of God. It is nothing that we have done. It's all about him. So I live, I'm walking in the image of God. I'm walking in the image of God. My time is up. I'm sorry, my time is up. I have the other scriptures I want to read. I can't believe I have all these verses I need to get to and I haven't gotten to this morning. But understand this, we are God-made people. God made us. He created us. And when he created us, he put himself in us sin came along and damaged the reflection of God and anytime you sin you do damage to God's reflection but thank God for grace and mercy thank God that God comes along and gives us the opportunity to be born again and as we are born again now we are in our lives reflecting again the image of God because we are created in him in righteousness and holiness that's the word of the Lord that's what God says I know we say other stuff but that's what God says and I live by the Bible as I said earlier I believe that the Bible is inerrant and infallible and because I believe that I believe God made us not just the first time but the second time too and when God recreates us as we are born again he does it right Stand with me all over the building. My time is up. Whew. Quickly, bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that we are God-made people. It is you that have created us and not we ourselves. Father, I pray right now for everyone under the sound of my voice that's a born-again believer, that they will begin to reflect the very image of who you are. God, I, begin, I, I pray that they begin to reflect you by the mind that you've given to them, the spirit, so that they can know you. I pray that they will reflect you by the heart that you've given them, the emotions, so that they can love you. And then, Father, I pray that they will reflect you by the will that you've given them, so that they can obey you. Father, thank you that you created us, made us in your image. Father, if there's anything in us that's not reflecting the image of our Father, if we're not looking like you, sounding like you, thinking like you, when you've given us every ability to do so, Father, I ask that you would forgive us now. Forgive us now. And I thank you, Lord God, that your forgiveness since just simply puts us back in the place where we should be for you. Thank you, Lord. I have the mind of Christ. I have the will of Christ. I have the heart of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And just like First Lady was able to say, thank you, Jesus, for obeying your Father. I have that same will that I can obey my Father. Now, Father, I pray if there's anyone here this morning that's listening to me that's not born again. Father, I understand this. We don't draw nobody. You do. And so, Father, I pray right now there's someone in this building that's not born again that they would simply and humbly ask you to come into their lives and to save them without any fanfare, without anybody, you know, showing an open show of it, just saying simply to you, Lord, come into my heart. I want your image. I want to reflect you as my father. Father, I pray that as they do that, that God, you would save them, cause them to be born again, bring them into your kingdom right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that somebody just receive you we bless you for it now in Jesus name amen come on clap those hands and give God the best praise that you can give him